All right, so this is my third attempt at making this video. <laughs> so, um, by the way, I mean, you can just go on YouTube and uh, there's various uh, channels. Uh, I didn't realize that the, um, the GoPro, I mean, it's not like uh, the camera on, on the phone. And the only reason that I'm re-recording this video a third time is because the lighting was so bad and I moved everything to this room well this is the bathroom <laughs> at the hotel <laughs> to record a video in but the lighting in here i thought was outstanding and on the phone it looked great and that was the only thing that clued me in was i said well there's something that i got to learn about the gopro to get the lighting correct and it turns out uh you know the gopro is a lot different than the phone you, well i think the phone there are settings that you need to set but it seems like it automatically adjusts pretty good gopro not so much um yeah, there are auto settings on the GoPro. Let's just, it, you know, I know this this the video is not meant to be a GoPro uh, video. And, and like I said, you can go, uh, the, the video I found uh, really informative just for making a, a sit down type video like this was GoPro best settings for indoor light by a great day for a hike. And I thought, you know, since I'm a hiker, I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna promote this guy and I'm subscribed to his channel and I've only watched the one video and I tell you what, it. I thought he did a fantastic job and uh, so I'm just going to kind of shout these out real quick um, but you know I suggest you just watch his video because he gives a, an explanation about you know why you're setting each setting and I took notes and uh, it, I had to watch the video about three or four times uh, so you know the first thing is you know you hit the side button on the GoPro whether it's the 9 or the 10 you know come up to your settings and then uh, you know you're going to pick one of the um, the pre uh, pre-programmed uh, settings or you can go into uh, custom and create your own and that's a whole nother video uh, but I just choose cinematic because yeah, he said the cinematic settings that he uses is very close to his uh, indoor light settings and I thought well you know what I I just had one setting for all because you know most of my videos are outside um, so let's just quickly go through these this is not what this video is about but I I did want to educate you because uh, if you're watching my videos you're probably into maybe making some of your own videography or uh, or just observing you know how people improve because um, I think I'm, I'm that's what I'm trying to do is improve the channel I've told you that I'm going out I'm, I'm get, eliminating uh, lists I'm deleting videos I'm trying to clean up everything uh, and then eventually probably uh, I'll open up a new channel uh, maybe hiking with Kirk or something like that and just get rid of that cybersecurity guy. So first thing is swipe down and then to the left uh, and that'll bring you into preferences. Uh, and then if, uh, you know, you're gonna go into general settings, scroll down and uh, make sure the, um, the uh, anti-flicker setting is set to uh, 65 Hertz because that's what we have here in the United States for the lighting. And I thought that was a good thing. And then of course your video compression is HEVC. That's the highest, uh, and that's on the nine and the 10. Um, so then, you know, you, you're also going to go into um, uh, edit the, uh, when you get into the main settings, um, now on the GoPro 10, you're going to choose the 5.3K, uh, you know, before the 10, and then, then of course that's going to be 5K on the 9. Uh, now this is kind of weird because you're going to choose a low uh, frame rate because you want to let in the maximum amount of light. It makes sense because you're indoors, right? Now the lights are pretty bright in here. So I'm wondering if, if I'm going to be recording this video a fourth time. <laughs> you know, I don't know, you know. But it's certainly when you saw me on the couch and I, I am I going to redo those videos? I don't think so. But um, you know, I only got so much time for this stuff. But uh, so you know, we 24 frames per second uh, is your shutter speed. Now we're going to get in more into that in just a second. Uh, you're going to put your lens as wide, which makes perfect sense because you're trying to let in the maximum amount of light. And as he points out, if you knew what you were doing, unlike me, uh, with because I use the DaVinci Resolve, uh, you can always crop the video, make it look a little better. Um, now this this uh, this is one that I, you know, because when you're outside, um, I'm always using HyperSmooth, um, and that just smooths things out. Uh, I am going to get one of those um, those sticks that uh, so that when I'm hiking along, the camera's not bouncing around. I, I forget what they're called, uh, and he recommends two in his video. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to buy the more expensive one. I'm pro probably going to do that maybe tonight and have it waiting for me because I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm going to get back to the free state of Florida. Yeah! I mean, I don't know. We'll see the doctor this Wednesday and uh, 
I mean, I'm so done. I'm so done with all of this. Doug, don't, don't break your neck, especially in Virginia. Okay, so um, so your lens, uh, lens wide, that makes per a hyper smooth off because you don't need it. Um, of course, the bit rate, it seems like no matter whether you're outside, inside, I mean, I, I don't even know why they offer a bit rate because everybody puts it on high. Maybe there's some, some reason that you might want to use something different. I don't know. All right. Now, this was, uh, this was very uh, interesting because your shutter, you're going to set that to 148, uh, not auto, okay? Because uh, you want two times your frame rate for the, uh, the shutter. Now, I'm not a camera guy. I'm just following what he said, and that's, that's what he was uh, pointing out. Uh, so that's going to give you the max there. Uh, ISO min, it seems like no matter whether you're inside or outside, you're, you're always setting your ISO to a minimum of 100. Uh, you got the ISO max at, uh, well, most of the time at eight, outside it's centered at 800, and he was saying 400 inside. I don't know, I, I probably wouldn't hurt anything to um, put it at uh, 400. Now the white balance, uh, he was talking about that. You'd have to watch the video. I'm just gonna put it on auto, uh, just because I'm, I'm not sophisticated enough to know which type of lighting that I have here, other than it seems very bright to me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the last two things, um, were our common sense well he said put the sharpness on low now i'm not sure why that is uh and then this one makes common sense uh cut the wind off and then of course i actually put, took the dead cat off of the now i have the media mod now you would probably use a plug-in mic uh for better sound quality um but i figure since i got the media mod and the men doors and there's no uh train noise right now i'm we are good to go so uh, that was the first thing I wanted to talk a bit about my journey here uh, because I'm going to go back and <laughs> I gotta, I'm going to make a screenplay about all this because it just seems like I, I live one disaster to the next. You know, of course, I was in the emergency room last Tuesday because I ran out of uh, caffeine supplies. I was trying to get more and then, you know, it was a, I, think, I think I told that story in another video. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, so yesterday, you know, I said, well, it was kind of a cleanup day and I don't know why I've been wiped out. Um, I'm, I'm, it's almost like having a motto. I've been sleeping a hell of a lot. This is just for the people that, that know me and that watch these videos. And uh, um, so I really haven't been, been doing a whole lot, but just sleeping. And, and you know, I got a shower, you know, trying to take care of myself, doing the best I can. Um, so I did laundry. We actually have a washer and dryer here at the um, Home to Suites uh, Hilton in uh, Charlottesville. And uh, so I brought the laundry up and I was so doggone tired, I left my walker and my laundry sitting in the hallway and I came in and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna take a quick nap. <laughs> so, so I came out and there was my walker sitting against the door and I was like, wow, I left the walker out here. It'd been about an hour, hour and a half. And, uh, and I looked around, I, where's my laundry? Now, you have to remember in earlier videos, I only had one shirt, one shirt for the longest time. So finally, uh, uh, my real estate agent showed up and brought me some extra shirts. Well, guess what? All my shirts are in the dumpster now because <laughs> they thought that was a garbage bag. I have that, I, now that's kind of silly because the garbage bag was sitting right there with my walker or the, the laundry and it was in a separate bag. It wasn't in one, you know, because they have special laundry. I, don't get me into it. So now I got no shirts again. I got, I, got, I got this shirt and one other shirt. Oh my God, every time I turn around, something disastrous happens. All right, so let's get into the world, uh, world stuff. I just want to kind of uh, touch on things, uh, make some predictions, and, uh, and let you know where, where things are going. Uh, because I've been watching a lot, of, uh, a lot of Rumble, a lot of YouTube, um, a lot of reading. Um, because, you know, I, other than working on finances, by the way, I mean, I'm dealing with uh, four different pharmacies. Uh, you know, of course, I got the VA involved now, you got UVA Healthcare. You got uh, Centra, Centra Health down in Lynchburg, because that's where I first went to the hospital. All of these bills coming in, they're all, you know, 10,000 here, 2,000 there, you know, and I'm, you know, it's a full-time job. I mean, if I didn't, I'm telling you, one of the greatest things that I ever bought was the, uh, the laptop computer, and I know that they're hard to come by now, but it was worth the 2,300 bucks. It saved me a whole lot more than that in, in the years that I've had it. And I use it for making videos. So let's get into the uh, Russia versus Ukraine just a little bit. Um, so 
so one thing, you know, we put the sanctions on Russia and those uh, global idiots, <laughs> I love it, they, uh, they thought, you know, oh man, that's going to wipe Russia out, you know, the, uh, you know, we, we, and of course at that time they were still selling their oil to Europe, which was kind of funny, and, uh, and of course, it, you know, and they said within a week Russia was going to back down. Ah, the sanctions were a total failure. I mean, if you look back on it, and that's the thing, I don't understand why uh, the average person doesn't look at the media or the mainstream media and go, wow, they said this, but this happened, and it's only been, you know, two or three weeks. And, and this just goes on and on and on, and yet they still believe everything they tell them, you know? I, I don't get it. Um, so for the war in Ukraine, I mean, you know, rather than me go into to, to all the details about it, I would say watch uh, Viva Fry and Barnes on uh, YouTube or Rumble. Um, they did an interview with the, the, the Dresden, I'm subscribed to his channel now on uh, Rumble, and also he's got a blog, uh, the DresdenReport.com, uh, and that's D-R-E-I-Z-I-N, D-R-E-I-Z-I-N. But I tell you, this guy, his name's Jacob, Jacob Dresden. And, uh, and he's just, I mean, he really breaks it down. Uh, you know, now, is he right about everything? I have no way to dispute it. Uh, he, I tell you what, he seems on top of it. He understands Ukrainian. He speaks Russian. He's an immigrant from Russia, I think. And uh, his perspective was just uh, outstanding. Um, so what I got from, from that episode and watching other videos and everything is... Uh, the first thing that you got a question that I don't really understand why the American people, because the globalists, you know, it's now the globalists against Russia, China, India, any of the uh, uh, orthodox uh, Christian nations or the, uh, the, the nations that are trying to break out into their own individual. Uh, and I, I, I hate to say it, I think the globalists are losing at this point, uh, which means uh, hard times here at home. Of course, they don't care about us anyway. Um, but so we're sending, uh, I think we're up to about $85 billion to Ukraine and arming them with weapons. Now in Russia, if you watch RT television, which I know that a lot of you can't get um, unless you know how to stream video, um, they're displaying whole weapons piles <laughs> that the Russians are taking from the Ukrainians. So we're really arming the Russians, just like we armed the, uh, the Taliban. Uh, by the way, the Javelins, they, they don't like, the Russians don't like the Javelins. They say they suck. You know, they're not even using them in combat, but they did put them on display, and I don't know if they'll give them to the Taliban or not. I, I assume all of our weapons were going to start appearing in uh, Iran and uh, a lot of the, um, uh, the nations where we probably don't want them. So, they, so, so yeah, we're sitting 85. Now, think about it. What, sh shouldn't we be up in arms? I mean, think of what $85 billion could do for our border. Okay, uh, securing the border, um, uh, helping uh, with uh, the small businesses, uh, you know, all of the things that we need here at home, and yet the globalists are going to bankrupt the United States to win this war in Ukraine. It's a proxy war at this point between the globalists and Russia, and Russia's winning. I hate to say it. So we'll get into that prediction here in a minute. So uh, one of the things I didn't really understand was the Afghan disaster, and Dresden kind of broke that down. Uh, because I think what it was was the globalists honestly thought, I mean, this is how stupid Millie and that traitor Austin are up in the White House, I think they honestly thought that the Afghan soldiers were going to be able to use those arms to hold off the Taliban. Even though all evidence was there, I mean, they're, li they're, they're living and dreaming their own damn propaganda, and I think that's, that's why that, that, that whole situation happened, because they, they honestly thought, you know, I, I, this is kind of, this is the only explanation I got. Otherwise, it, it, I mean, it literally, you know, why are you going to arm the Taliban? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't get it. But uh, and of course, the American people don't care. That's another what eighty-three billion dollars that we spent that we could have been putting into the border, helping the American people, uh, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't get it. I, 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 you know, pitchforks and knives, people on on Capitol Hill, and uh, of course, you know, you got Congress now. Um, we'll get into the election here in a minute. Um, so now. I want to talk about the ruble versus the dollar. The ruble right now is very stable. They've got it, the Putin backed it. He knew the sanctions were coming. So he got it backed by gold. He's still selling his oil to China, India, uh, various other places. Russia's doing great. Their whole monetary system is completely stable. Whereas look at ours. You think we're at 9% inflation? No, if we brand it by Carter's numbers, we're at 17% inflation. Now, I, I don't understand the leftist lunatics. You'd think they'd be feeling the pinch just like the rest of us. 
or even five dollar gas prices. I don't care. You know, they say, well, everybody should take public transportation. Well, they can go to South Dakota and try, <laughs> try to find some public transportation. Because, you know, that's all they know is the cities, you know. And who's going to starve? We're, we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're, inflation's killing us. Uh, government spending. Now, you think the only way you can get inflation under control is to cut back on government spending. Um, do you see that happening? Not with the Democrats in charge. Uh, so, so inflation is only going to get worse. We may see hyperinflation at some point. I don't know. Uh, and, and then, of course, we back the Fed. I mean, back in the uh, 70s, uh, um, we raised the Volcker. You know, he raised the interest rates all the way up over 20 percent. I don't remember how high he got to get inflation under control. That's not an option for the Federal Reserve now because we're 30 trillion dollars in debt. And you have to understand as we raise the interest rate, that the amount that the U.S. government has to pay on the debt goes up. So both are going to spiral out of control and basically the dollar becomes worthless. And guess who's there? If I could buy rubles right now, I'd be buying rubles. I'm going to tell you that for sure. I mean, I, in fact, I'm going to start looking into that. So uh, that, that's a good way to diversify. Uh, of course, hard assets, farmland, uh, that type of thing. We're going to get into my farming uh, section of the video here in just a minute. Um, the other thing is uh, we're, we're going to have um, food shortages. Uh, you've got the globalists like Bill Gates and a lot of them guys, they bought up a lot of farmland in the United States. Now what they're doing with it, I don't know. I think a lot of it's just laying fallow. And so I think they really want food shortages. Um, and if you follow the news, we've had a number of weird accidents at food processing plants, quote, quote unquote accidents. Now conspiracy theories say that they're not accidents. But there's been quite a few of them, and, uh, and also the working conditions there are quite poor. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't want to work in, in the, um, in, would you? Would you want to work in a food processing plant? I know I don't. Uh, same as I don't want to be a nurse, you know. Um, so I, so I, I think that the production out of the food processing plants is, is going to go way down. Um, the other thing is the diesel prices. Uh, a lot of the farmers are having a real difficult time, and they're... They're leaving more and more land fallow, so uh, so just what we're producing here in the United States is getting less and less and less. And then when you take the fact that the Russians now have cut off the uh, wheat, they've got a blockade. Um, so none of the none of the because um, Ukraine's kind of a bread bed basket for Europe, uh, and uh, if, if if we needed to import anything from there, we really can't. Sorry, I gotta sit for it. I won't explain why, but. I, has a little bit to do with this bag on my leg for, um, that's called a Foley bag. Uh, if you follow my video about Tuesday, you'll know why that's on. Um, so, so we're looking at a lot, some serious food shortages, which is gonna really hit the cities. <laughs> and they're the ones calling us the, the country bumpkins and uh, you know, saying South Dakota is a bunch of knee dragon Neanderthals. Uh, we'll see who wins in the end there. Um, so, uh, so transportation costs, have gone way up. I just took notes, so let's toss that down. That's all about the uh, the GoPro. That's done. Um, so uh, ah, let's look at uh, gas prices. And uh, this this is one that that blew my mind. You know, this is one of the reasons I'm divorced because uh, you know my wife, huge Biden supporter, huge Democrat. You know, I'm a MAGA person myself, and uh, and uh, boy, she hated the fact that I went out and bought a Toyota Prius Prime in June. Well, at that time, she was plotting the divorce, and I didn't know what, that it was going on. I, I was more worried about getting up to Virginia and helping my mother. Uh, I don't know, in hindsight, I guess it was the right thing to do. I certainly learned a lot about uh, being in a hospital, um, you know, with a broken neck, laying in your own poop and pee, and having the nurses roll you back and forth and being completely helpless. and. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's been a valuable experience for me. And uh, yeah, I, I miss my life, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm kind of seeing uh, now that I'm out on my own and, and struggling uh, in this hotel room, um, I'm, making, uh, I'm making progress pretty quick. And so maybe in about six months, I can start making uh, short hiking videos again. It'd probably be a year before I can get out for some serious hikes. But, you know, the writing was on the wall, and I, two years ago I kept telling you gas prices were going to hit $6 a gallon. 
And uh, if nobody listened to me back then, of course nobody hardly watched me anyway, um, but the first thing, you know, Biden did, he destroyed the Keystone Pipeline, he destroyed the fracking industry, uh, they, they pulled back the, the Anwar uh, exploration. I mean, the writing was on the wall that they, they were totally against the fossil fuel industry. So gas prices here in the United States had no place to go except up, right? And then, of course, you know, then now they're blaming it on Russia. We don't, we get smidgen of oil from Russia, Russia or we used to. I mean, now we're over, oh, that was another one, was we're over begging uh, Saudi Arabia for oil. Well, there was a hot mic uh, in a video, and uh, Macron, I think that's the name, Macron, the, the leader of France, he was talking to one of the Saudi princes, and the Saudi princes, he says, we're pumping as much oil as we can. <laughs> so there's no more oil that you can get out of Saudi Arabia. So the only place we can go, I guess, is Iran or Venezuela, you know, let's just do that. Uh, then you got to get into the, uh, the the border crisis. Now, why is the border happening? Um, now, the couple of predictions here, uh, you know, going back to Russia versus uh, Ukraine. Uh, and, and like I said, I encourage you to watch that video and also go watch the Dresden report. Um, Russia is just pounding the shit out of Ukraine. That war will be over by the end of this month. Uh, and the globalists are going to lose again. Uh, most of the weapons of the $85 billion dollars. Uh, will be in the Russians' hands, uh, if not the end of July, certainly by the end of August. Um, and I don't know if you knew, um, if you follow along, I can't remember, was it was Marinopol or um, there was another city that they, and so I've, I've talked in the past about that envelopment strategy that the Russians were using, especially around the cities, same as what the north did to the south at Vicksburg. And, uh, and they just surrounded that city and of course the city thought, you know, oh, Russian or Ukrainian troops are going to come to our rescue or somebody's going to come to our rescue. Nobody came to their rescue. And the Russians just pounded the shit out of the city and guess what? They, they surrendered everything. So uh, Russia's kind of going to do that strategy as they move along. Um, and the Ukrainians, I mean, they, you know, right now they're just, they're, they're basically conscripting people like the Nazis did. You know, young guys, anybody they can get their hands on and just sending them up. They've got no training, they've got nothing, and they're running at that first opportunity, laying down their arms, and the, and the Russians are just... So I'm just telling you, I mean, as much as you want to hear on the news, uh, there is an occasional... There was actually a... I think it was Fox News, and there was a general on there, and he actually broke it down according to exactly what I'm telling you. But he's the only one I've seen. If you watch some of them other idiots like Kelly or... Uh, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, yeah, Ukraine stands a chance. They're going to fight back. Well, yeah, of course, you know, now we've got Finland and what was it, uh, Sweden on board with NATO. Um, you know, like I said, the globalists are going to pour everything into this proxy war that they can, but I don't think it's going to work. I think Russia's just going to uh, pound the shit out of them and, and be done with it. Because uh, unless we're going to send troops in, and then you're looking at World War III, and I've, I've mentioned that in the past, uh, you know, once nukes get into it, then bye-bye world. Um, so... Getting back to the border, uh, now this is where that 85 billion that I'm talking about, okay, why are we worried about Russia if it's not the globalist in charge? You know Biden's just a puppet, right? You know that it, they're just pulling his strings. I mean, why else would you send 85 billion dollars to, 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 to Ukraine when we've got fentanyl? So I had to look up these numbers. 92,000 people in 2021 died from fentanyl. Now, $85 billion will go a long way to uh, solving that, uh, that, that fentanyl problem. I mean, think about that. In World War, I mean, the Vietnam War, I think, was 50-some thousand uh, troops died. So more people died from fentanyl in 2021 than the Vietnam War. We don't care. I don't get it. Uh, you got human trafficking. The drug cartels are pouring people across, enslaving these women. And all the women are going, oh, your right to abortion's been infringed. All it did was be kicked back to the states, uh, which is where it should be in the first place. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're all worried about abortion so that we can kill uh, potential babies, you know. And no, I'm not saying that, you know, if a, if a woman's life or, you know, if there's complications or whatever. And every state has laws that, that take care of that type of situation, whether it's a red state or a blue state. Um, you know, but in the blue states, you can just abort it and chop its head off whenever you want. Um, and then, of course, you know, what I'm predicting is there will be no 2022 election. Now, the reason for that is, is because not only do you have the drug cartels coming across the border, there are a lot of terrorist groups that are pouring across. And I, I'm not so sure they're not involved with these, uh, these fires at the food processing plants. That's total speculation. Okay, I haven't read anything, seen anything that ties 
terrorists into that type of activity. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying that those could be preliminary runs. And it would certainly work to the, the Democrats' favor because all we need is a major event, like a 9-11 type of thing. Boom, martial law, no election. Or um, we may have a resurgence of the, uh, the COVID virus. Um, I don't think that these, uh, these RNA shots are keeping up with all the different variants of the, uh, the COVID. And, uh, and, and, you know, are we in store for another serious uh, barrage of, uh, of COVID? Um, I think so, um, because it's mutating. It's just like the flu. I mean, some years the flu is really bad. Some years the flu is just a sniffle. You know, same with uh, same with COVID. Except uh, now we've we've blocked certain receptors with that uh, with the um, the so-called vaccine, if you want to call it that, and uh, and that's worked up until a certain point. But the, the virus is mutating so fast. Uh, you know, Omicron turned out to be a, a blessing because it gave a lot of people natural immunity, but not the ones that have been vaccinated because they had the the uh, the RNA. Um, anyway, don't don't get me into it. I don't want to get this this video banned. This is not medical advice. I don't, you know, I'm not a I'm not a freaking uh, biologist or anything like that. I'm just telling you that, uh, you know, I have a feeling that there's going to be a variant of COVID that's going to kind of bypass those vaccines, and uh, and everybody's going to be in trouble at that point. Whether you the vac the uncleansed, vaccinated, unvaccinated, excuse me, or you're uh, vaccinated. So no 2022 election, total victory for uh, Russia. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we got into abortion just a little bit. All we did was kick it back to the states. I, you know, the leftist lunatics are going crazy about that. I don't see why. All that means is, you know, you, you work on your local elections and, uh, and get the laws passed the way you want. That's the way the United States is set up. That's the way it should be. The other uh, major thing was the EPA. Uh, we had all those climate change lunatics uh, that uh, were overstepping their bounds. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, so what can you do? What can you do? Let's finish off the video there. Uh, I certainly have kind of mentioned things, hard assets, uh, silver, gold, farmland, uh, and I wanted to get into what I'm going to do. Now, see, now that the old bag of bones is out of the house and I'm divorced, uh, the house is mine. Uh, well, it will be. I got to pay my wife another 40000 Um but I, I think I managed that somehow. Uh, anyway, let's not get into it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have a bird cage in the back, which is kind of like a, but it's a screened in all the way over top. So the, all the rain just comes down into the bird cage. Uh, and I got, of course, I got a nice grill out there, but my wife took all the furniture anyway. So I'm gonna turn that into like a hydroponic garden uh, with the help of my yard crew. These are uh, some, um, Mexicans and I'm gonna tell you what man they are the best of the best and I'm gonna get with uh, my buddy that cuts my grass and he said he's got some ideas on how we're gonna turn that birdcage into a, a food producing plant and because it's a pretty you know it's a pretty big area size of a kitchen or a living room you know and uh, I I'm, I I'm think I'm gonna get a lot of good and of course also outside I also turned that into a garden already so I'm gonna I'm gonna be growing right much food I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a pro that's going to be my number one project when I get back. Besides getting myself healthy and uh, you know making videos and cleaning up my YouTube channel, putting up a website, stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I, I encourage you to look at is the silver and gold and platinum and uranium uh, mining stocks. They're pretty depressed right now. They're down with all the other stocks. Uh, and then of course the Sprott ETFs. Uh, th those are based out of Canada. Although you got Trudeau there, I mean, you know, he could always just come in and, you know, uh, bring bring all of that silver and gold as part of the uh, the uh, Canadian. Because uh, I mean, I'm telling you, that's a communist country now. Uh, um, Canada is, so I'm not sure how safe those fraud ETS would be. But I mean, that would be the beginning of the end for uh, for Canada, because that would be just like Venezuela when they uh, when the government took over the oil industry and destroyed it. Um, so now the last thing I'm going to finish with is banking problems, because uh, you, you, you know, be prepared, you know, brace for impact. Okay, you're already seeing ATMs closed around the country. Okay, and uh, and so sometimes you'll show up and you can't get money out of the ATMs. Um, the other thing is, uh, and I, I experienced this when I first got here, that a lot of times the doors would be locked to the bank because I had to get into my mom's bank. I haven't seen this in Florida. 
the free state of Florida. Woohoo! All right, so let's get back to um, the other thing is I wouldn't be keeping too much cash in the banks right now. Um, and uh, in, in that vein, um, I'm just telling you what, what you need to do if, if you've got the means to do it. And if you don't, get a second job. I mean, this is the time to be out there hammering, hammering, hammering. I mean, I, I'm sorry, man. I worked 88 hours when I was young. Can I do it now? Oh, hell no. In fact, I have a hard time walking a quarter mile at this point. With, I mean, you know, I'm in the wheelchair. I, mean, I guess still got the broken collarbone and uh, well, I think the ribs pretty much repaired. But uh, so what I'm doing is I'm paying bills in advance. I'm trying to get my car loan up six months in advance and my home mortgage up six months in advance. I'm getting a little bit of a uh, inheritance from my, my mother who died Cinco de Mayo. Uh, I fell down the stairs uh, on the 10th of May and then ended up in the hospital on the 11th. And then that's, I've been documenting that story. We're, we're gonna make a whole, that's another thing I wanna write is a screenplay about this whole adventure. I mean, you know, just, just the fact that yesterday my clothes got thrown away. <laughs> in the garbage you know i mean it just seems like the saga just continues you know now i got nothing to wear again oh my god um so uh yeah you know the other thing is uh, you know look i'm looking at all my bank accounts because you know i did clean things up or i thought i cleaned things up when my wife uh divorced me but i mean i had so much going on you know my mom was dealing with her finances i'm trying to deal with my finances i'm trying to clean up the bank accounts um so just one quick story was my auto insurance went up I called a broker down in uh, Florida and boom, cut, cut my interest in half. I'm with Travelers now and, and they're telling me they're saying Travelers is a good company. I don't know that for sure. Uh, the other things I've been cleaning up accounts, uh, you know, like I had checking accounts in my name and I had some in my wife's name and then I had joint accounts and the joint accounts I've mostly taken over in my name. So what's the point of keeping a checking account? Now the checking accounts that were in her name, I'd already closed for the most part. Uh, but then the ones that I had hanging around, I mean, what do I need two checking accounts at the same bank for? So I'm closing those accounts and consolidating everything. Um, so I'm, I'm just telling you, simplify the finances, put everything on autopilot. You know, I want to travel. I want to go to maybe some MAGA rallies. Uh, I want to do some camping across the country. And I've kind of learned in this experience, being gone from Florida for seven months, how ill-prepared I was uh, for for you know, being able to travel and just leave everything alone at the house. Uh, I won't even go into any details about that. Uh, and then of course, you know, you, you know that your bank accounts can get frozen. Uh, during the 29, you know, they, they shut everybody out of their uh, safety deposit boxes. That's why, uh, you know, I, I'm very uh, skeptical about safety deposit boxes. Uh, look at what happened to the, um, the Canadian truckers. They actually froze their individual bank accounts. Okay, so, so don't think that, you know, if you get politically active or you piss somebody off that, you know, and, and then of course, you know, we set a very, very bad precedent that, or the United States or the globalists, really, I mean, the world, uh, whatever, the WTF, uh, they set a huge bad precedent because they froze all of Russia's assets. Well, that sent a signal, all of that, that was like, you know, the shot heard around the world that, uh, you know, if, if you're a nation that's a rogue nation, not a favor, um, they're gonna freeze your assets. So do you think that China, India, Russia, well, Russia's already done it for the most part, uh, nations around the world are not abandoning that petrodollar as fast as they can? Of course, we're getting away from the petro industry to begin with. How long do you think the US dollar is gonna last when nobody's using it around the world? because they know that those assets can get frozen now. That was a, that was a hugely bad move on their part. Same with the, uh, the Canadian truckers, because now I bet the people of Canada, they're, they're spiraling out of control. They're, they don't trust their banking industry more than you can, you know, pick up a, a, a something and throw it, you know, as far as you can throw it. So I, if I was a can Canadian right now, I'd be hiding my cash underneath the mattress or, uh, you know, investing in silver, gold, and platinum, or whatever else I could think of to get the hell out of the Canadian banks. Because, uh, you know, I, you don't want them to have the ability to freeze your assets. So, I guess that's it for this video. I don't, won't be talking about things unless I see something new and different. Um, I've kind of expressed my opinion, my predictions. Um, you know, the two huge ones, no election in 2022, and of course, Russia, a total victory in uh, Ukraine. 
So uh, and then at, then at that point, so that's 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 the black pill, white pill, because once the globalists uh, are on the run, uh, we are going to suffer big time in this country. But on the end of that train, maybe we'll come out, uh, you know, back as con as a constitutional country where the states have most of the power, which is how it's supposed to be, and we can we can take that power away from the federal government and get back to a constitutional republic the way our forefathers designed it and, uh, and be free again, just like the free state of Florida. You know, that's why Florida's booming right now. I, I just saw uh, there was a huge billionaire. He's moving all of his. All right, well, I <laughs> went through the whole first battery there on the, uh, on the GoPro, uh, so I'm on the second battery. Anyway, I, I'm trying to figure out where I was. But I was talking to, oh, the billionaire just moving to, to, uh, to Florida out of New York. So, I mean, our, our, our GDP in Florida now, of course, Texas is doing pretty well, but uh, they got that border problem um, that uh, has been engineered by Biden because they don't want the, and I believe that uh, Texas is now firmly red. You know, a lot of the uh, Hispanics uh, in the southern part of uh, Texas, um, and, and why in the world, you know, of course, if, once they legalize all those illegal aliens, which is what the Democrats are going to try to do, um, you know, by the way, I mean, if you're, if you're not aware that the Democrats are not buying for the working class anymore, or the middle class, boy, you got another thing coming, you know. Uh, they, they're not for you. They're just for the uh, corporations and uh, uh, the globalists uh, at this point. And are the Republicans much better? No. I mean, you know, look, we just had 14 rhinos vote against the Second Amendment. Uh, that's Republicans' name only. So hopefully we're going to get them out. Uh, if there's an election, like I said, I, I don't think there will be. Uh, the Democrats, no way they can hold that election. They're not going to give up power, people. No way, no how. Uh, and then, are, then, then we're going to have to look at other, other, other means. Um, of course, convention of the states, possibly, but I don't think there's enough. Um, well, without an election, you don't have enough for Republican states to have a convention of the states. Now, whether some of the Democrat states might join in that, I doubt it. Um, they're pretty firmly, uh, I tell you what, they, they walk hand in hand, and you got to give the Democrats credit. I mean, they, they're for the globalist, uh, communist, uh, Marxist uh, uh, corporations, and uh, they're, they're going to they're move a lot of stuff in that regard. So um, I guess that's it for this video, and I, I'll try not to get too political. I, maybe I'm just going to be having a, because I'm, I'm documenting this because I'm not going to remember from day to day, what the hell happened to me? Because, <laughs> I mean, I bet the trip down to Florida is going to, something big is going to happen. I mean, I may be on a train, an Amtrak train, and, you know, get stuck in, you know, someplace, somewhere, you know, or I'm staying in, I mean, look at all the stuff that's happened to me here. I've been attacked by a homeless person and, uh, you know, went without medication for three days, almost passed out from low blood pressure. I mean, you, you name it. I mean, my God, it just seems like this whole adventure is, just keeps going on and on. You got to laugh at it. You know, you can't let it get you down. I, and I did get depressed one day. Uh, one day I was feeling real, real sorry for myself. And every now and then I do have that moment, you know, where I think, you know, should I have gone to Virginia to help my mother, you know, and, uh, and look at what had happened to me. I broke my neck and, you know, it was that my fault. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I if I just stayed in Florida, I would have been happy. Probably would have had the finances in order and just let things just mushroom the way they were going to go up in Virginia. Of course, we thought she was dying at the time. Didn't know she'd overdosed on pills. All right, so let's do the mantra. Someday, someday. I'll be back in the free state, the free state of Florida, where we have no, well, no vaccine mandates. By the way, if you're a National Guardsman, one of the 45,000 that are losing your job, we do have the uh, Florida State National Guard. Uh, now, there's not too many people in there, but you can put your application in. Uh, we'll certainly welcome you to Florida, just like we welcomed all the doctors and nurses that were fired in New York City and Seattle and a lot of the blue states. I, I think we even took some out of Virginia. Uh, if you're a pilot, and uh, I'm not sure how that would work because you're traveling around, uh, but certainly there's probably jobs where you could just fly within the state of Florida. You know, I might look into it. Uh, we, we welcome anybody, uh, you know, because we have no vaccine mandates and uh, we, uh, you know, if the federal government wants to institute that again or lockdowns or any of that thing, uh, if you're a small business uh, or a billionaire, be sure and relocate your, 
your business to Florida. Just don't vote Democrat. I mean, that's the main thing. Uh, by the way, I heard because of the Roe versus Wade, the Second Amendment, and uh, there might be some Democrats moving out of Florida. That'd be a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. All right, man. Peace out. Stay free. Okay. And uh, hopefully uh, soon we'll have some videos coming out of Florida, uh, perhaps with, uh, you know, basically just documenting uh, my recovery uh, and maybe some other fun, fun stuff. Uh, I do want to get to some, some events, uh, whether it be just a motorcycle. Uh, well, I can't ride my motorcycle probably for a while. I went in and just canceled the insurance on it. And they were going like, well, you need comprehensive just in case. I said, what, my, my house has been abandoned for seven months and nothing's happened to my motorcycle. You know, I'm not worried about, I mean, I guess a hurricane could come in, but it's in the safest place around. My garage is like a, you know, you should see the garage door. I think that you could hit it with a tank shell because it's a, one of those hurricane-proof garage doors. So it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty impenetrable. Um, I do need to change the codes, though. All right, man, stay free.